and welcome back to Southeast Texas Weekly. I'm Kevin Steele. Great to have you with us. We appreciate it very much. Time to talk politics. Iran in the news. Putin in the news. We have some political races in Pennsylvania, and we first have to talk about what could well be the largest teen movement in the history of the United States. This matter of gun violence in our schools. Joining us to talk further, Godfrey Leggett from the left and the uh, the the great WLP, uh, Beaumont City Councilman from the right, we'll pleasure, say. Pleasure great to be here. Great. I'm in the middle. Even though, you know? even though he's in the middle at this, right. at this moment. Glad to be here. Great to have you guys. What is this notion of, uh, of all of these students in their walkouts all across America, coast to coast, Maine to Hawaii, uh, teenagers walking out saying it's time to do something. Did it really come to the students of this country before something would be done about guns? What do you make of this, of this what historians say really could be the largest teen movement in the history of the nation. Well, I think it's a sincere thing, okay? I don't think it's some trumped up, I hate to use the word trumped up. They don't want just Dang. out of class, in other just, words. No, they, no, they're, they're actually concerned and, and have desires for things to be done. Now, they're not able to execute any political power, but when they grow to voting age, they will be. So politicians should take note. And it looks like well, the House of Representatives, anyway, is taking notice. Well, one of the things you need to follow the money. You know, in that great movie, Jerry Maguire, Show Me the Money. Uh -huh. Find out who's paying for the buses. Find out who's organizing. And you see, in a lot of areas, it's funded by uh, left-wing groups. I don't believe there's that much busing. Well, I know. Oh, actually, in Baltimore, they spent $100,000 of money to bus these people, the, these students, $100,000. Now, these are schools that people can't read and write, literally, in middle school literally cannot read and write. The city's upside down. There are more people getting killed in Baltimore, and if I'm not mistaken, right now, more people murder per capita. It took over Chicago as far as people getting killed. Well, because Chicago so their started focus, to so, if he's and, correct, the, and the school why do you districts say it's are run by the city. I think, I think most of these kids are sincere that they want to change. What do what do the students want to see change? Now, you think in terms historically, you think in terms of the college student movement in the well, in the sixties, and the, and there, that was a, a it was a reaction it, against it's the not Vietnam just War. one thing that needs to be done. Okay, first of all, we could enforce the existing laws strictly. Okay, secondly, we could do a better job of dealing with our mentally uh, deranged people. You know, really, we should do a better job tracking them. Thirdly, we should register every gun in the country, every one. And you well, should be checked to see if you're mentally... That's a surprise look on my face. Well, no. That, that a progressive I thinks we ought to register I didn't every say, gun. I didn't say take the guns away. Yeah. I said register them like they, you do They cars. did that, and it worked well in Germany where they, yeah, you the, know, eventually no, they went, oops. They only oh, took the guns. They anything. only took the guns from the Jew, Jews and the, and the Poles and the Oh, the Gypsies. ones they sent to the concentration. That's right. All the Germans, they were happy there's to have a, them with they were, yeah, I think there's a tie in there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, my get, point is, no, yeah, no I tell you guy. what, okay. uh, there in any question, something needs to be done. But when you have gun-free zones, people that are mentally disturbed like are Like the one go, you're sitting in right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, something absolutely. is wrong with America, right? But are you scared? Shaquille O'Neal, Shaquille O'Neal, who is far from a right-wing conservative, mm -hmm. said, it, we don't need, this isn't about gun control, it's about having uh, uh, individuals there, cops, protecting the schools so that these people don't show up and start shooting it up. And it's so sad when you have uh, individuals who will use, we are, who use these students as props. Anytime you see Nancy Pelosi, WL. Chuck Schumer, and Bernie Sanders L at let's the get, head of these. Let's get back to a few facts about gun deaths, okay? The United States leads the world in the number of people killed by guns every year. Uh, and we have more guns per capita than anyone else in the well, world. There's a, a connection there, don't you think? Well, we're also talking about 5,000 gun-related homicides in the country uh, each year, mm -hmm. and about a half million abortions each year. So you know, you do have well, that, but, by the way, to okay. consider. Uh, and, no, wait and feel a free to comment now, the, on that. Abortions have funny. nothing to do with gun control, right? Mm -hmm. But here's it's, what's it's, funny. It's, it's, no, you brought up an excellent it's point. Death. Here's an excellent point of the people that are killed by guns. The people on the left are say, take away the guns. You get. Didn't um, say that. 
Uh, didn't say yes. No, I didn't. It, no, I, I didn't say you said. Okay. I'm saying the folks on the left want to take away the guns. Okay, well, I know. And then how many abortions do we have a year? Down a half million at least. At, oh, mm -hmm. and, and when you and, think... And you're going to stop uh, that? No, yeah. here's the thing. But it, it, One's it killing, just points up that the notion. Other's feel killing, free to comment on it. But the left is for out. abortion. That is, that's okay you're, if you kill it that you way. You can only but, make it tough on the poor people. Not to have abortions. Well, well about, off people could get a plane ticket, go wherever they want, have well, an abortion, come back. Well, that's a like I said, this is a we'd so, have to we'd have to expand well, this to an hour have, show. We an hour long well, show. Yeah. Fifty and million dollars though. And, and, and let me, worth, and let me but, put this in: fifty million dollars in the House bill, a rare bipartisan act uh, by the U.S. House of Representatives. Only ten dissenters to this notion of a new bill. It does training. It does. Uh, uh, it, it has uh, a lot to do with the coordination between the schools. And uh, is it a good bill? What do you think? That's of it? not what we need to do. We need to register all the guns and check on all the mentally people. This bill does not people. go near far enough. No. Well, listen, we, our friends on the left, we love them. They're just misguided. Yeah, okay. we're misguided. We, but honestly, we, we understand I love, facts, okay? I, I, I love Godfrey, and he knows it. He uh -huh. knows it. You can't. But, but the reality of it is just somebody having a gun, and I will say this uh, forever. When I grew up, uh -huh. And went to Just high school in the seconds. '60s. Uh -huh. Gun racks in yes, trucks, yes, yes, yes. and nobody was shooting up. It was, a different, was, shooting up shooting up it was a different. It was a different it was world a back then. Yeah. Yeah. time. We'll talk That's about right. that different world. We'll talk about uh, many issues when we come back on Southeast Texas Weekly. Stay with us. It really was. <laughs> It's the Ram Spring Sales Event. So long live the trucks with best-in-class 30,000 pounds of fifth-wheel towing and class-exclusive features like coil-link suspension for a smooth ride and Ram Box storage. Long live growth and new beginnings. Hurry in during the Ram Spring Sales Event. Now get an average 13366 in total values on the 2018 Ram 1500. And Texas residents get these additional offers. If you've got a yard, you may plan on digging in it. Like to build an addition, put in a pool, or bury your pirate booty. A harg. But you should know that throughout the state of Texas, there may be pipelines buried underground. And if you hit one, you've got trouble. Sorry. So before you dig, call 811 to have any buried pipelines located and marked at no charge. For more tips on pipeline safety, visit pipeline-safety.org. A message from the Texas Pipeline Awareness Alliance. And we're back on Southeast Texas Weekly with a um, very loquacious Jeff Lewis. We can barely get into the There's program because he wants to right talk there. so badly about politics. I mean, can you blame the man? <laughs> He's seeing chaos in his White House, and he doesn't know what to do with it. Hey, it's your White House, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's Unfortunately. It's White House, isn't <laughs> yes. it? Yes. Uh, hey, uh, we, had the, we, we had eight is, years of that lecture. This is my president, too. Well, it's he, still your president. It's still my president. That's Don't like it. vernacular, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but your president is sitting in the, all of our presidents, sitting in the, in the White House right now in a White House that is chaotic if you listen to some of the national writers. I know you some of your views on the How national to a media. Uh, but the way. point here is, <laughs> is this indicative of a White House in chaos with Rex Tillerson, the Secretary uh, of State, being fired, not even being able to articulate why he was uh, I had dismissed. heard the whole story come out on that, but apparently uh, I, I listened on this little show called Hannity yesterday that said Tillerson had kind of gone off the reservation a little bit with some of the stuff he wanted. Then I heard other reports that said Tillerson was the second coming of Jesus or something like that in the State Department. So, I mean, it's kind of like, who do you believe? Um, I, I look at it like this. You know, all those guys serve at the pleasure of the president. And the president mm -hmm. serves at the discretion you know, of the American people. people. Yes, so right. if you don't like who he has in, he can change it. And Usually, if you don't like who you have in, you can change it. So yes. I mean, that, that's how we do it in this country. Were you surprised at the at the firing of uh, Rex Tillerson? No, I, th I thought Trump was getting unhappy with him for a while. Yeah, I mean that's nothing new. I don't think it was off now, the radar. What's more concerning to me is that Pompeo. I don't know. He's kind of a loose cannon in some ways. Uh, Did you said about like every single nominee he's ever made? Well, I'm just saying. Possibly, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Rex Tillerson's not just got used to work for the man at Mobile Oil, Exxon Mobil, but I thought he was a pretty level headed person. Okay. Well, in the White House right now, in terms of its uh, um, departures and or firings, is at a record pace. Is it a record pace for dismissals yes, this at this point of, of the administration? Almost of the administration. twice as many as. 
previous. But does that mean chaos? I hadn't done all the calculus on it, but I'm sure it's pretty high. It's at least twice as many as previous. It's pretty, it's pretty really high. Bad. What's what's the deal with that? Are you not troubled by that in no. any way? Honestly, yeah, uh, you're okay with it that kind of a It doesn't really door. it doesn't really bother me who is in what agency of the federal government, because quite frankly, I don't think the federal government is really the driver of American society. I mean, if you, it, this is the whole concept that, you know, liberals think that government does everything for you, well, and but you do have conservatives have, believe that it's the American people that drives the government, we, we so do I don't have, have a problem with that. We do have to have a State Department, yes? Yes, we have a State Department. And we have to have a Secretary of State out there. And, and how often does the, sec uh, does the State Department change its figurehead? Usually t twice or three times. A couple times administration? Yeah, twice. Uh, okay. Maybe. Yeah. All right, so. But not in the first if, year. If it's and a half. that big of a deal that something changes, shouldn't we make it, you know, words like a 10 year appointee? How many, how many, uh, you know, what, what you're conceding is that continuity years. in the office is just not that big of a deal. Hmm. Because what do you think of Pompeo? So it's, What's it's, he going to do? Well, let's take, let's, take, let's take the CIA part of it, okay? okay? We got a nominee for CIA that is a wifer, okay? She's been deputy uh, uh, of operations for years, okay? Mm -hmm. Y'all have a problem with it because, I don't know, she believes in waterboarding? Okay, you, yeah. got, you got a bunch of... You know, career if people up there laws, that are actually that buy, actually buy, run buy the place. Laws. Okay, Yo, it's the political appointees that are you know, you know re replaceable. What do you, what do you think of Passable, a uh, potential nominee for the CIA now? What do you think? First female uh, in the post. What I don't do you... know that much about her to be honest, but mm -hmm. from what I've heard, I'm not real pleased. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to see you her heard go she was back a Republican to... appointee, right? No, okay. I just like to go back to. <laughs> being a nation of laws and living by the laws we so profess to a have. Absolutely, and those laws say that water boring is okay. So, I mean, no, they don't. You know, that was my argument. No, they don't. And you think Pompeo will be bad at state? I don't know. Uh, he's a, he's kind of a loose cannon, I think. I, well, what do you mean by that? Is I that mean, the Democratic talking point today is loose cannon? No. He keeps saying the same word again. I was just okay. curious. <laughs> okay. He's unpredictable. But, of course, Trump is unpredictable, so how could you tell, you know? Well, John F. Kelly is the chief of staff out. Well, that scares me more than anything else because John F. Kelly was now the only person kind of trying to keep Trump going in a certain direction. And he's gone. Trump's completely loose. He's, you know. Who do you, who do you want to bring back? I don't know. Okay. I, I don't know. I mean, you're, I you're like way more worked up about I, these personnel moves than I am. I was just wondering. I mean. Well, <laughs> I, I don't think, I think Trump's dangerous, honestly. Oh, I know, and that's the whole premise is that you guys don't think that Trump ever should have been elected that's and right. isn't fit to be elected and All anything he does is elected, an admin. And this, I'm thinking, well, you know what? Our economy is going pretty good considering yeah, these tax well, cuts seem to be relatively popular. See, and, I could show you know, honestly, his approval rating is actually pretty good for this point in the presidency. So, I mean, I don't know your big notion that that, that the economy is uh, it, at least on paper going uh, it, going up. It responded to his tax cuts, but now it's fallen back from that. Well, you mean they were and, popular? I thought no, you said they were no, like the most popular, not, unpopular thing comments. we've ever done. Amongst wow, the general people. You mean not, people like getting their money back that they work for? I, 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 I can't believe that. that. I think y'all could do so much better at spending Jeff, all of it you and know, borrowing more Jeff, and spending Jeff, that Jeff. and and to it. You know that the rich people got the majority of those tax cuts. Not the poor. I don't know. Yes. Uh, not rich. Yes. Can well, you tell I'm me what you did? What did you do with it? I didn't. I'm not rich. Okay? Oh, okay. There's, a, there's, a, there. Are a lot of people feel like uh, have said anyway in some of these published reports that they feel like, uh, yeah, their year is going to be a better year. 2018 is going to mm. be a better year because of the tax cuts. We'll you see. don't buy into it. We'll you, see. You, you I, think I, it'll be evaporated? I think there's a lot of way. downside potential here. Margaret downside potential. Mm -hmm. okay. Growth of the economy is a downside to the country because then we actually have to, you know, pick up our own boots and do things. I haven't asked you just quick, uh, quickly before this break is over. The largest teen movement in America. What do you think of this notion of the guns bill? Fifty million dollars a year into the idea of training and uh, coordinating uh, some of the systems, uh, mental health systems for better can, can, reporting. Can I, how long do I have to answer this? Just uh, okay, quick, quick moment. Super quick. Do, I, I don't. Seconds, I don't. Says. I don't get this whole argument because. Whether or not the Second Amendment is the guarantee of rights, my rights do not come from a document. Okay, these roots, these rights are protected in the Constitution, but that's not the originator of the rights. The originator well, of my rights is natural law. You, I have the right to defend myself by whatever means necessary. But the, period. But the founding fathers saw fit to write it in uh, into an. Uh, because a, the amendment. federal government was going to take away those rights no, where they could. Because they the, didn't, the Constitution didn't, protects the citizenry against no, the government, not the other Jeff, way around. The founding fathers didn't want to have a standing army. They wanted to depend on the militia. 
militia. And yet we still have a standing army and you still want to take away guns? Well, but, I mean, I but don't But we get what didn't at the is. time of the founding fathers when, 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 the, when, the, when the amendments were written. At the time, we I, I thought, we had aren't, a Navy, aren't, aren't you a big army. fan of saying that the, you know, the founding fathers uh, didn't have a clue of what they were doing? No, because, I didn't ever you know, say for that. For example, I mean, we only had like two-thirds of a black person or something? I mean, you know. I never said anything about so, that. Uh, again, uh, if you're going to make an originalist argument, which I, I would actually support you making because well, I do believe original intent. But original intent was to have a militia. Okay. That was so, actually registered so I will as a militia. So I will concede if we disband the U.S. military right now, we can go to straight militias. Otherwise, no, I imagine the Second really. Amendment is expanded to mean more than what you're talking about we, with just the militia. In, in no today's way. world, we really have to have an army. And okay. with that, we have to take a break. We really Coming need to back, have guns. Kent Batman, the Hardin County GOP chairman, and Michael Lindsay, Lindsay and Parsons, here to talk more after this. Break. Stay with us. There's a moment in your bones when, when the fire takes over. Cash allowance on the 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee, and Texas residents get these additional offers. Get your team together and sign up to help crush a play for the American Cancer Society. Saturday, May 5th at the 1 in 100 Gun Club in Wilmerton. Call 409-924-0576 to reserve your team. Let's crush some clays. Find out who's the Athlete of the Week Wednesdays during 12 News at 10. Brought to you by Wendy's. Check it out, the all-new 12newsnow.com, powered by J5 Tractor, the number one dealer in North America for Mahindra, the number one selling tractor in the world. Welcome back, folks. We appreciate you being here. Ken Batman here with the Hardin County GOP chairman. Uh, we appreciate you coming by, sir. Good to be here, Kevin. And Michael Lindsay with Lindsay, Lindsay, and Parsons. Good to see you. Always good to be here, Kevin. Give us a quick word on what do, may be a giant movement in this country. This, this notion of the younger people saying, look, it's about time we do something about guns and violence. And then what are the implications long term uh, for the nation? Is, the, is this notion of uh, gun restrictions uh, a fait accompli at this point? Has, has the... We're, we're, we're past the time. We're past the time. That you can control guns. You can make it, you can get a plan on the internet right now for an AR-15 and make it with a 3D printer. Guns are just one of those things that's just way too easy to make. People reload their own ammunition. We just need to prepare for a world that has access to a lot of things that can hurt us, and you got to pr protect yourself. And, and, well, that would, if I'm hearing you right, imply that the movement on the part of the teenagers uh, is a lot of noise with n no possible uh, resolution well, to this get, notion of, of gun violence. They're not even in favor of that. I could have a day tomorrow for the, to support the Second Amendment. If you gave me a day off of school, every, the same number of kids are going to be there. <laughs> We've got 300 million guns on the streets of, uh, of America. Uh, it, it, regardless of what you did today, uh, you're going to have those guns still out there. Is there anything in this? I don't, is, is, it, is it a real movement in the, in the sense that, that we thought of back during the Vietnam War? I, I don't know, Kevin. It, it's the it's strangest, strongest movement that, that I've seen since, since Vietnam. And I'm totally impressed with these kids. Uh, you can go into a crowd of any one of them, pick them out. They're smart, articulate. Uh, they're able to express themselves very well. Uh, as far as it's a movement or not, give it give it three months, give mm -hmm. it six months. They've kept things together better, longer, and stronger than I would have thought. I'm totally impressed by the walkout yesterday. These kids are smart. They're organized. They're using their phones. They're Googled in. They're talking to each other. And this is the generation, not just these kids in high school, but this is the kids in, in this generation since Columbine that have lived in the shadow of, of uh, gun violence and terror at school. Mm -hmm. And I like, uh, I, I don't know where the movement is going, but I like the issues they raise. Can we just talk about in this country? Can we have an honest debate? Can we talk about mental health? Can we talk about background checks? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about some of these crazy weapons? Can we talk about the size of magazines? The answer to everything that, uh, the answer that the NRA has for everything is no, it's a second amendment and we're not going to talk about it. And I hope that day is over. 
Okay, that's uh, that's uh, that was a compelling case, was it not? Are, are the are uh, Republicans in leadership? Are they prepared to start talking like that? You, it makes me think they are. When Paul Ryan comes out and says, you know, here's a here's a fifty million dollar a year bill that that could help. Well, I mean, obviously Trump's been talking about that. The, the people that have not been coming to the table are the Democratic lawmakers. But when you listen to the kids from Florida, several of them said they're pretty upset with the fact that you've got a president that seems like he's ready to negotiate, and you've got others saying they don't even want to come to the table with him because, you know, he's not pushing far enough. So they're not offering any options. It, there, there's discussions for things like... Um, you know, mental health. There's, mm -hmm. there's discussions, things that we can affect. Uh -huh. the total number of guns is not going to change. In fact, total number of guns goes up every time we have one of these. We didn't have 300 million guns before Obama. We had 200 million. I mean, so, I mean, these kind of discussions don't decrease the guns. But the dialogue and things that can be done about who has them, where they are, you know, do the good guys have them? Do we have good guys that are brave enough to go into the school when they're That's being shot at? I think I, 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 maybe the country would be better if these two gentlemen were running uh, the country. That was an interesting conversation. Iran, the nuclear deal may be renegotiated. NAFTA may be renegotiated. Where are we going with policy when it comes to these notions? Uh, the, the, the president, especially since Rex Tillerson stepped away, is reportedly more eager now to maybe uh, try to uh, work new legislation to get uh, change with uh, the Iranian nuclear deal, which he believes is not working, according to these published reports. NAFTA, um, you know, we, we saw some of that uh, conversation. Uh, we saw Mexico and Canada get a break uh, in terms of uh, tariffs. If there's a renegotiation of NAFTA, where are we going to go with all that? I'm going back to the campaign trail and we're going to get some of those really smart guys in the White House and they're going to be doing their job. And Kevin, I'm not tired of winning yet, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm impressed with the job the President has done out on the Pacific Rim, pulling the Americans out of the Trans-Pacific uh, Global Treaty, by which the way, 11 countries have now gotten together and left the United States out and China is going to fill that void. So I'm looking at that and I'm saying that's about 11-0 over there, so I'm not seeing that as being a big winner, any winner, this president has brought not a single trade agreement home. Not one that he's negotiated with anybody. Well, is he going to set off a trade Three, war? 313,000 new jobs last month. By the way, the first year of Obama, after Obamacare, 5 million jobs were killed. So Trump creating 300,000 new jobs was is, is a result of his policies. Well, Trump's not dealing with the Great Recession, and I want to get back to that <laughs> trade agreement. Let's get back to this trade agreement where they've been taking advantage of us. So some of you are creating jobs, but let's have these guys. The Chinese are taking advantage of us. Uh, uh, Canadians are taking advantage of us. The Australians mm -hmm. are taking advantage of us. And, one and treaty, just one. Yeah, I'd like to win yeah. one. He, he, he really doesn't need a treaty. The way the way this is working, he's he's creating tariffs that are stopping you know the Chinese from importing steel at a much lower price price than it costs them for, to produce it. I mean, those are threats and those are clubs and those are things that you bring to the negotiating table later. What's going on with Mexico and Canada? I think he's saying we can work with you if you want to work with us, but there's the there's what could happen, 25%. Here's what could happen, 10%. You get to decide by your behavior. You feel like it'll be a net positive uh, in the end? In the end, there's uh, no question it's going to be a net. And I'm yeah. not big on... on uh, you know, trade restrictions, yeah. except we've known for years that so many other countries don't work with the same environmental policies we work with, they don't work with the same labor uh, considerations that we work with, and mm -hmm. so to have free trade when, when they don't have those those restrictions was not a fair trade yeah. anyway. But the, tra the, the Pacific Agreement provided for equal wages, environmental concerns, and worker safety, and that was one thing that treaty did bring to the table. We'll be right. NAFTA did not. Back in just moments with David Covey, the Orange County GOP chairman, to uh, talk about this matter of the guns and more after this. Stay with us. It's the Ram Spring Sales Event. So long live the trucks with best-in-class 30,000 pounds of fifth-wheel towing and class-exclusive features like coil-link suspension for a smooth ride and Ram Box storage. Long live growth and new beginnings. Hurry in during the Ram Spring Sales Event. Now get an average 13,366 in total values on the 2018 Ram 1500. And Texas residents get these additional offers.
event is on now. Mix and match favorites like Ruffles Potato Chips, Lando Frost Lunch Meat, and more. Welcome back. David Covey, the Orange County GOP chairman here joining us to, for the first time, I think, ever, right? Maybe the yes, second time. The second, time. Maybe, maybe the first time. Uh, great to have you with Thank us, you. my friend. Glad to be here. Time to talk politics. Let's talk uh, North Korea, where we may have, for the first time, in a face-to-face -face meeting. I don't know if anybody has officially reported whether the president sits with him directly face-to-face -face or if it's, a, if it's a summit of sorts with the delegates. I, I'm, I'm still not even clear on that. I've read conflicting things. Uh, but if there should be some kind of North Korea deal. Is that a huge breakthrough for Donald J. Trump? You know, I think that uh, the president is trying something that hasn't been tried before. So, um, you know, Obama and other presidents have tried to do things, but they haven't been successful at it. So a lot of people are worried that maybe the president is uh, being a little uh, overboard by sitting down. With he's them. had some tough, he's had it's, some tough love. But has he, not? He's, maybe he, has, the thing. he has. Do you think that's the deal? Is that why the North Koreans are willing to sit down at this point? No, they're going to be embarrassed the American president when they call him to the Korean Peninsula to share with him what the little rocket man's all about. Well, there the, will be no deal. They've already been embarrassed in America because we haven't been able to come up with any kind of deal that could control them, and they keep right on marching forward with getting ready for their bombs. So you it's, think it's, the little it's rocket man, he'll, he'll summarily dismiss this notion of uh, dismantling his weapons, and his uh, proliferation will continue. You think it will uh, continue just as it is? Absolutely. You do? Yeah. And, and, and if I'm wrong, Trump will be elected to a second term, and he should be nominated for <laughs> but the is it, is uh, Nobel worth, Prize. Isn't Absolutely. It, isn't it worth <laughs> trying something new and see if it'll work? I mean, we've sure, but you don't have to threaten the North Korean Peninsula with nuking them every 49 hours yeah. uh, to get well, them to go. We've got to do table. something to get this threat away. It's about every week we have a threat that we're going to be, you know, have a nuke go off. So uh -huh. it's like, well, let's try yeah. something. It'll so work. Let's try something. <laughs> what do you think of this notion of the of the teen walkouts? This, the high schoolers walking out across the country. Uh, to to uh, to say, look, let's do something about guns and violence. Are you uh, satisfied that uh, the president is uh, working in good faith to, uh, to you know to end gun violence, to curb it uh, in American schools? I, I think both parties are probably in good faith. And one of the things President Reagan had said was that uh, it's not that the Democrats are wrong necessarily, it's just they know so much that isn't true. Mm. And so I think there's there's some miscommunication. I think that uh, these young people, although have a genuine concern, um, they're not they're not completely informed and have the knowledge to make the right decisions on where we can go from here. Okay, so that, that would, if I'm hearing you right, that implies that we, we do a $50 million a year uh, bill. You know, we maybe improve uh, cooperation between the schools and the police agencies. And at the end of the day, not a thing will change that will still have have almost as many uh, shootings in American schools. There will still be just as much violence. If I'm hearing you correctly, the guns are still going to be there. And, of course, uh, your colleague, Kent Batman. Uh, it doesn't sound like anything can sub substantively be changed well, in America. I don't, I don't think that things are going to need to be changed with guns. I think it's we need to change, look at mental health. We need to look at training people. We need to look at education. I think that's what's going to cut down on the violence. Mm -hmm. This is These are problems with people who are severely disturbed. That's a thing. Uh, it's, a, it's a big, big issue. You know, you had this notion of, say, just at Parkland, the, the communication, we saw tons and tons of reports uh, from this particular Nicholas Cruz shooter, and, we, and, and nobody did anything. At least this bill has the reporting, some reporting requirements that maybe could work. I don't know. What do you think? Well, I think my That'll head's work. spinning like a bobblehead doll. <laughs> and uh, when President Trump sat down with those families and was talking about increasing the age to 21 and doing away yeah. with the assault weapons, has dinner with the NRA and had a little amnesia, and nobody remembers any of it. And didn't this bill doesn't include any on that, or and even arming teachers. You know, it? so the Republicans have got the presidency, the House, the Senate. They're doing nothing, and nothing's getting done. Michael Lindsay, David Covey, thanks so much for your time, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Another great broadcast here, Talking Politics. We'll be back at it in two weeks. Thanks so much for joining us here on Southeast Texas Weekly. We'll see you next time.